I would like to thank the Kennedy Presidential Library, the Kennedy family, and the Vice President for the honor of speaking with you today on the 50th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's remarkable call to action during his speech before the Joint Session of Congress on May 25th, 1961. This speech led to America's commitment to the moon race and ultimately established our leadership in space thus opening the space frontier for all humankind. I remember that period well, the challenges and the perceived threat to our national security at the time were very serious indeed. Just eight years earlier, I was flying F-86 fighter jets in combat missions over Korea. Just three years earlier, I was flying F-100 Super Sabre jets armed with nuclear weapons in the European theater. Even as President Kennedy called for a national commitment to the lunar landing program, we faced an increasing threat to our security from the emerging partnership between the Soviet Union and Cuba within our own hemisphere. And just six weeks prior to President Kennedy's speech that we are celebrating today, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space and concurrently the first human to orbit our Earth from space. An extremely impressive accomplishment. NASA would follow Yuri's flight 23 days later with Alan Shepard's flight on May 5, 1961. Certainly a worthy accomplishment, but it's important to recall that Alan's was a suborbital flight, not an orbital flight like Yuri's, which required much more powerful rockets an indication of the greater launch capacity of the Soviet system. Make no mistake, America was clearly behind in space. And our young president understood this and fully appreciated the serious implications this represented to our nation as he called us to action with his memorable declaration. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. And he did so in full disclosure for all to witness without the cloak of secrecy as he declared, we take an additional risk by making it in full view of the world. In this way, he provided an opportunity for the world to clearly understand our goals, witness our commitment to it, experience our achievement, and share in our inevitable tragedies. Unfortunately, in the absence of a comparable defining goal for our space program since that time, along with the requisite commitment to it, has hindered our efforts in space. It is essential that we correct this by establishing a bipartisan commitment to an enduring goal that will inspire our nation, build upon the basis for our continued international leadership in space, and provide focus to the people who will be entrusted to carry it out. When our beloved president would later be taken from us, on that tragic day, November 22, 1963, after just 34 months in office, our national determination to meet the challenging goals he had asked of us was that much greater. Just two and a half years later, on July 20th, 1969, when Neil and I first stepped onto the surface of the moon at tranquility base, achieving the dream of ages for all mankind, standing on the shores of a new, barren, magnificent, yet desolate, distant orb, we viewed our own precious, small earth from a whole new perspective. Everything we knew and loved lay suspended overhead in a small, fragile, bright blue sphere surrounded in the blackness of the infinite reaches of space. This was a transformative experience of far greater importance than winning 
the space race to the moon. The Apollo program was a tremendous and challenging effort made possible by the dedication and total commitment of the very best our country could offer. As we reflect upon this accomplishment, I would call for the recognition of the 24 astronauts who conducted the Apollo missions reaching the moon to receive the recognition they so richly deserve, designating them as lunar ambassadors. And for the lunar astronauts who also served in the military during this period, I would recommend elevating their rank to the equivalent of a two-star general. So I would like to briefly talk about now a few of the important outcomes resulting from Apollo and try to anticipate the way forward in space. In addition to reaffirming America as a leader in space, Apollo inspired a new generation with renewed interest in the pursuit of scientific and engineering careers. There are those who will rightly caution that we have many other challenges that require our attention in the near term. It is a question of balance and the essential requirement to invest in our future with the same conviction that President Kennedy made during his challenging era. To do less would be to surrender the future of space to others who will undoubtedly assume this worthy challenge as we fall behind. The way forward. As was the case with President Kennedy's call to this nation 50 years ago, courageous leadership is needed to set a clear goal, destination, and schedule. A founding principle to frame our goal should begin with a declaration of our commitment to continued American leadership in space and ultimately lead to the expansion of humankind into the cosmos. I believe that the specific goal we should undertake in support of this founding principle should be the establishment of permanent human presence on the surface of Mars by the year 2035. This schedule would provide roughly three times the amount of time it took us to accomplish the first lunar landing. Recalling that it took approximately 66 years from the Wright brothers' first powered flight in 1903 to realize our first landing on the moon in 1969, the recommended goal of humans on Mars by 2035 would occur approximately 66 years following our Apollo 11 landing. We should establish a flexible path and utilize the capabilities we develop for our longer term goal to enable an expanding reach beyond low Earth orbit. We will also be able to conduct missions to asteroids and near Earth crossing objects that may one day pose a threat to Earth perhaps exploiting their resources to sustain our presence in space as we seek a better scientific understanding of their origins and the history of our solar system, while also developing the ability to counter their potential threat to Earth. We should keep in mind the difficult lessons from both Apollo and the space shuttle and not replicate or reuse systems that have proven to be too costly to sustain. As we did for Apollo, we should develop specialized vehicles with optimized capabilities. We should employ innovative approaches, such as utilizing special orbiting cyclers, a concept I conceived several decades ago that would serve as space stations that would cycle between Earth and Mars orbits, providing a reusable system to transport significant members of future explorers and colonists to Mars and its two moons, Phobos and Deimos, leading to the permanent settlement of Mars in 2035. In undertaking this great challenge, 
we will be honoring President John F. Kennedy's bold leadership, fulfilling the one remaining goal he called upon us to undertake as we embrace a future that will sustain us on Earth while expanding human presence into a limitless future in space, a future that will be possible only with the courageous and determined leadership he so exemplified 50 years ago today.